And even though Lovett is the best and the most amazing mother these children are blessed to have, Lovett still needs to make some changes. Pick up your shoe. Pick up your shoe. Pick up your shoe! Now I'm going to show you my resting face. If you dare laugh. If you dare... You're going to have questions. Heck, Same I have me. questions. One of the reasons why I would not be sending my children to a Christian-based school. For working moms. And I always think of working moms because I know when I was working a lot of these things, I couldn't do because the time no, is short. I, I don't even so want to... I, like, I'm just like... <sighs> positive reinforcement. I'm, the I'm, positive I'm, reinforcement is good job. Like, yeah. I don't we've already failed we've already failed oh my gosh we've already then, failed. yeah i think it's fine you know although you can do xyz and i kept it short take me as i am you know. to when i ask my kids about um what mommy should do differently to my ceiling to my floor to my walls to my windows to my doors <laughs> Hey mamas, welcome back to Mommy Silts. It's another week, another time together. Today, I'm going to discuss with you what I'm doing differently with the kids because no one is perfect. And even though Lovett is the best and the most amazing mother these children are blessed to have, Lovett still needs to make some changes. If I were an employee, every year there would be an annual review and we would talk about what Lovett is doing better and ways for Lovett to grow. And then we would talk about my rings. But since these people do not pay well at all, other than buying me purses and shoes, Loveth will do her own review and Loveth will pay herself what she thinks she deserves, which should not be mentioned on camera. Every mom should often take a look at what you're doing, do a review, a self-review, because you know, you can't lie to yourself. Do a self-review, see what you need to change, what you should implement, what you should start, what you should stop. I think it's only common sense. I mean, if you want to keep your kids away from therapy, it's the right thing to do because you've never been a mom before. I'm trying not to talk with my hands. Y you see how that worked in the previous video. <laughs> it didn't work that well, but I'm going to try. I'm, I'm keeping it down here between my thighs. We're going to try not to have it all over the place. All right. So here are a few things I plan on implementing this year that I think will be so great for my girls and I. I'm not going to go into things that I should do differently in this video. Let me know if you want me to do that and we can discuss what Lovett should have done differently last year. <laughs> it's not that much. Lovett is perfect, almost perfect. So it's not that much. But let me just focus this video on the things I'll be implementing. Okay. All right. The very first thing, and if you follow me on Instagram, you know Lovett has been trying and Lovett is still trying and Lovett prays. She gets this down. Hopefully January is out of the window because January is almost ended and Lovett did not get it down. <laughs> but hopefully by next month, no yelling. Oh my gosh. I would love, I would love to not yell. I would, listen, common sense. Because I, a lot of things I check with common sense. A lot of this whole parenting, you know, theory and styles, I use common sense. I, I, I put it through common sense. Common sense tells me the yelling is ridiculous. And tr I'm not the one yelling up and down. You know, I, I don't spend all day yelling. No, that's not it. But I do yell because it's like, me saying something the first time is just optional. Pick up your shoe. Pick up your shoe. If I say this one more time, pick up your shoe. <laughs> I don't understand. I just, I don't understand why I have, it's, and you know, the yelling is honestly not effective because by the time the yelling is done after the yelling now i'm feeling bad because i've yelled now the child too is in a bad mood because mommy has yelled now mommy's you know they're sad they're well i'm sure they're angry too but they're also sad because now you know the emotion is different you've broken the happy emotion to the sad emotion you know and then now i'm sad that i've made the child sad now we're both sad all over the place, but we still have the day to go, you know, and now you have to get out of that sad mood because, and now you have to compensate. It's just, and then I have to explain if you had done it the first time, then I won't have to yell. But what difference does that make? I've already yelled, you know, and I hate the fact that mommy has to yell to get something done. Daddy says it one time, daddy raises his voice just a little bit and they listen, you know, it's like, 
I know, I know that's normal. I know because even with my own upbringing, my mom can say things several times, but when daddy says it, you know, <laughs> and I think it's just because they're so used to mommy all the time. Maybe mommy has raised her voice too many times that mommy raising her voice is no longer a big deal. So I really don't want to yell anymore because I don't think one is effective. And I honestly don't want them growing up feeling like mommy is always yelling, you know, like I don't want that. And <laughs> the yelling sometimes, you know, if you're, if you're, con I have three kids. If you're new here, I have three kids. I have eight, seven, three. How many people am I going to yell at? You know, if I, <laughs> what time you yell at one, two, three, I mean, okay. The three-year-old doesn't really make me yell. No, but she's at that age now where give me this. No, or do this. No, do this. No. So I don't have to yell because just me being stern, she gets it. But I don't, I, I don't want to follow that path with a three-year-old too, you know? So I really want to cut the yelling thin. I've tried. We haven't gone past the day. We haven't made it past the day. But listen, I can do all things. <laughs> I, this is something I want to get done. And another reason why I really want to cut the yelling out of it is because I do want my kids to grow up in a home that is more chill. You know, the way I was raised, yeah, yelling can happen, but we weren't spending all day, every day with our parents, the way I was raised anyway, or when I was raised, you know, my mom was a homemaker. She also had her, her, um, business as well, but I wasn't all day with my mom. It wasn't, you get home, your mom is at home. No, your mom is doing things, you know, and when you get home, you're not expecting to play with your parents. That wasn't how it was back in the day. And YouTube tells me a lot of you watching these videos in your twenties and thirties. So um, you most likely had the same upbringing in terms of the parents weren't the playmates. You come home from school, you go play with your friends evening, you come home, you get back into the house and that's when you have time with your parents, right? Not that they're playing with you, but that's when you see your parents. Same with weekends, right? But the difference now is that we are constantly with our kids. My kids come home and it's me, right? All day, all week, evening, all weekends, every single day. I'm their playmates. I'm their everything. We've discussed this before. <laughs> so if I'm yelling very often, it will come through as being mad or upset very often. And that is not what I want. That's not a vibe I want in my house. That's not what I want them growing up with. I don't want that. Another reason why I don't want that is because genetics, genetics. <sighs> All right. So my resting B face, my resting face is an angry looking face. It's a sad looking face even, not even angry. It's angry slash sad. These chicks, <laughs> these chicks passed on generations if i showed you my parents and my grandparents and my great grandparents the cheeks are there these cheeks are you see them in ultrasounds i saw them in all my kids they come through and all, that's how powerful these cheeks are and even though they give me the youthful look they are the reason why my resting face looks sad now i'm going to show you my resting face if you dare laugh if you dare all right so take a look I'm not sad. I'm very happy right now. I'm not sad, but my face looks sad. It looks angry slash sad. I know this. What I didn't know is that when I have kids, this is going to be a problem because I'm just, I'm just sitting there watching TV. I'm just, mommy, are you sad? No, no, I'm not sad. You know, I'm just cutting, you know, whatever I'm doing in the kitchen. Mommy, are you angry? No. <laughs> so, and I have already known this, you know, when I do my YouTube videos, if I'm quiet, you know, if I'm doing a vlog and I'm quiet, if you've noticed, I, I try to do something with my mouth, you know, I'm either, you know, I would maybe smile on the inside, like, or I would, you know, I would move my mouth so you don't see it as a sad or angry face except i think in one of my videos i made the regular face and i was like ah no 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 you guys will think i'm angry or sad but because of that resting face if i'm yelling often and then now when i'm when i'm cool when i'm calm i'm just being i look sad or angry my kids are going to think i'm always angry all the time i don't want to deal with that i already have to deal with not being 
the angry, you know, out in society. I don't need to be dealing with that at home. You know, I've already explained this to my kids that this is how my face is. We've already talked about it. But at the same time, I don't want to do the yelling because one, it is not effective. I want them to respond because my voice is stern because they know mommy has gone into her serious voice. And so you better do it now. Not from wait, she hasn't yelled. It's not yet that bad. It's not yet serious. Wait till she yells. And then when I yell, it's like, no, no, no. I don't want to do that. The second thing I plan on implementing this year, I should say I plan on being more consistent with this year, is having Bible studies with my girls. This is faith-based. So if you're not of faith, if you're not a Christian, this probably doesn't mean anything to you. So move on to number three before you fellow Christians with me, fellow Christian mamas. Uh, I think it is very important that you don't rely on anything else to teach your children what you force them to say they are. You know, it is, if you're going to say, if you're going to raise them as Christian and want them to operate as Christians, then it is not the teacher's duty. It is not the school's duty. It is not the pastor's duty either to teach your kids what they believe, <laughs> right? To me, the burden of giving my children sound faith or sound upbringing is on me, not the school, not the church, not the pastor. Yes, it would be nice, but I am not relying on that. I'm relying on God's grace because, you know, it's not like love it knows all, but I believe you teach them at home. You teach them how to read the Bible. You teach them how to pray. Now, I think the older they get, you know, you're not going to force them to be going to church and doing the Christian stuff if you're not going to take the time to teach them. Now for working moms, listen, I get it. I understand. So you're going to have to think of how to do that. <laughs> Figure out your life. No, I'm kidding. You, you know, and let me, let me, we'll discuss that at the end of this, but I, what I want to do more or more consistently is have Bible studies so I can actually teach them and know that they are getting the right the right information when it comes to what they believe. Here's what we believe. Here's why we believe, or here's how it works. Here's what it means. You know, you don't want your child saying, I'm a Christian, but then they don't even know what that means other than, yes, we go to church, you know, and you don't have to be a pastor to do that. There are so many resources now online, not that I've checked, but <laughs> you can find, I mean, there's so many devotionals online. So even if all you're doing is just, you pick a devotion and you read it with them, that's great. So they can ask you questions even because, you know, if we're raising Christians in today's world, I don't know why I did that, but if we're raising Christians in today's world, you're going to have questions. Heck, I have questions about a lot of things in the Bible. You should be able to have them ask you those questions because these are questions they'll have about their faith when they are older and as they get older and they they meet diverse people. That's one of the reasons why I don't, um, I this may hurt some people, don't take it personal. I'm just saying for me, one of the reasons why I would not be sending my children to a Christian-based school university, any of that, is because the real world is not just Christians. They are people of several beliefs. And I want them to be open to that and to know that from the get-go that, listen, just because not everyone believes in God, not everyone believes in your God. And that's that's those are the people you will be doing life with, you know, and, and so with them being open to that, I do want them to know what they believe in and why they believe at least until they get older and they make their own decision. But I think as, as I think I went on a tangent on that one, but I think as, <laughs> as Christian moms and dads, because 30% of you that watch me are men, it's our duty to teach our children our faith. All the schools are not teaching it anymore. Well, I don't even want them to. I don't, I don't, they don't need to, they should teach them what they went to school for and I will handle the other part. And of course, church will help, but let church supplement and let church add on to that. It opens up the room for them to ask questions about what they believe and and also just to build that foundation all right all right so let's move on to number three let me not spend so much time on the i almost forgot to address this for working moms and i always think of working moms because i know when i was working a lot of these things i couldn't do because the time is short so when i bring up all this whole thing of 
things I'm doing or things you should do or things I think you should do. I'm always very aware that <laughs> it's easier for me in a way to do it because I do have more time than a working mama. You know, if you're a working mom, when it comes to Bible study with your kids, you're not going to be able to do it every day until maybe your kids are older. Um, but even then they would have extracurricular activities. You only have a couple hours before it's bedtime, you know, when they come back from after school and all that. So if you're working eight to five and then you pick up your kids at six o'clock at seven o'clock, then it's not, you're not going to be able to, I think maybe something you can do is make sure that the church you're going to the youth group and the children's church is quality. You know, there's some, oh man, I, I'm not judging any, and I'm not, I'm not, standing on a soapbox to say, but we all know there's some children's church and some youth groups where you're like, it's a waste of time. You know, there's, there's nothing tangible. We're just, we're just playing around. They're not, which is cool. Yeah. The kids are playing around and jumping around, but are they learning anything, you know? So you definitely want to make sure. And something else you could do is maybe on Saturdays, not every Saturday, twice a month, twice a month. Sometimes it's not the quantity, it's the quality. You know, twice a month, you just get together and it's not a long period of time. Trust me, this is only a 30 minutes then, 45, 30, 45 minutes max, you know, maybe twice a month or once a month even. Once a month is still something. It's still a seed in the ground. As long as it's of good quality and, and that throughout your life, throughout the day, you know, you they know your you can bring it up in conversations or you can bring up a story if you do bedtime story in fact that is a perfect time if you do bedtime story reading those bible bedtime stories are the perfect great way to do it great way just give yourself some time some room because there'll be questions and if you're tired and they have questions you're like ah the whale swallowed him i don't know how the whale so it just swallowed it and it was in the whale and then it came out <laughs> you know <laughs> so just give yourself some time, time. Some time. <laughs> all right the third thing i plan on implementing with my girls this year and i'm kind of ashamed to say this but it's what it is being consistent with chores <sighs> I do think, yes, kids should have chores. I agree. But loveth, it's not consistent in making sure they do them. <laughs> we would have a couple of days of, yes, you do chores. And, you know, my girls are excited. Yeah, we have chores. They want to do the chores that they pick, which I allow them to do some of that. But uh, I would rather you do the chores that make a difference in my life. You know, don't go reorganizing your closet that is already folded up and all. No. Go straighten up the shoes. That's where I need help. You know, that's where I, that's where we need some organization and some straightening up, you know, but I'm, I'm horrible with being consistent. For instance, the playroom, I think I mentioned that in the last video, the playroom, I, I truly want at the end of the day, it's their chore or it's their responsibility to pick up at the end of the day, you know, which I already explained why that hasn't been happening. But even when the room is in order and it's just a little mess, by the end of the day, Loveth is tired and I do not want to, you know, reinforce and enforce, you know, I, I don't even want to, like, I'm just like, I'm, I'm, I'm done, I'm watching TV, I'm like, just waiting when it's bath time, shower, but go to bed, you know, like, but that's bad. That's really bad. Like I need to, I need to reinforce. I need to stay consistent. It has to stay consistent because it's not a kid's fault that they don't want to do it. That's just nature. That's human nature. Heck, I don't want to do the stuff I should be doing every day. It's human nature. So I'm not going to be mad at them for not wanting to do their chore. I need to, I need to, I need to be consistent in staying on top of it to make sure they do it. And part of it comes from positive reinforcement, but with chores, I don't want to do any positive reinforcement. The positive reinforcement is good job. Yeah. I don't want to give extra, uh, I don't want to give money for it. I don't want to buy a toy for it. No, no. Your, your satisfaction should come from the fact that your responsibility is to straighten up the playroom and you straighten it up. Good job. Just like mommy's responsibility responsibility is to take care of you and she's taking care of you and you say good job and then mother's day and birthday you give me something just like on your birthday and christmas i give you something do you does that make sense? <laughs> you get a point so yeah i i need to be more consistent and i plan on being more consistent this year the next thing i'm planning to implement with my girls but I'm, i really don't know how yet because it's very time 
demanding and i don't know how i'm going to split it with three girls it's a uh, one-on-one -on -one time with the girls having three girls and having to do one-on-one -on -one time daily i don't know how i'm going to fit that in but i know it's what they want and i can see how they will want them because even for me as their mom i see how i lump them all together i.e the girls you know and if we're doing anything we're doing it together so i see how they would want their own time and every time throughout last year every time we've had to do something alone i.e say one child was sick and didn't go to school and so they were home with me alone i you can sense the joy and they've even said it you know they enjoy that having one-on-one -on -one time or one kid couldn't go to the grocery store with me so i go with only one or i run errand with only one they loved it you know so i know it's something they truly want and i want all you mamas give me some pointers in the comment section about how to go about doing that i know they want it to be an everyday thing like my second child wants me to have a uh, reading time with her just her we stay together and read and when we did that she loved it and then my older child my oldest she liked um coffee time we called it coffee time <laughs> with mommy where um she has her mug it's, it's like a a coffee starbucks cup it's a fake one it's not even starbucks but that's what it looks like she has her cup with a lid and i have my coffee because i usually have a cup of coffee in the evening for my second shift you know to give me energy <laughs> so she one day it just happened at random she had her drink in that cup I think it was water even and i had my coffee and i thought you know what let's just talk she was in the living room her sisters were upstairs and i was like let's just chat let's just talk and she loved it i loved it too you know and i'm just going they've been asking for it but you know how am i going to find time in the day to to do that it would have to be 30 minutes windows but when they come home by the time they eat they have some breathing room they do homework and then time with mommy for everyone i mean that's then a shower then the mommy is probably having to make dinner and then it's just it's not enough time and i haven't figured out how to do that or maybe it shouldn't be an everyday thing um their dad and i have already discussed every month maybe one saturday a month he would take each one out you know this month it would be one person's um time and it doesn't have to be something expensive it could be as simple as going to mcdonald's or just going to the mall or the park but it's a one-on-one -on -one time that i can understand because it's once a month you know but for me i don't know they wanted more of a daily thing and i don't know how and i'm i'm open to suggestions maybe it can be daily you older moms experienced moms does it have to be daily i'm starting to think maybe we don't have to do it daily i don't know but i'm still trashing i'm still not trashing this i'm still trying to figure out how to do it you know but that's what i plan on doing this year i asked my kids what they think we should do more this year or do better or do differently this year and they had some some uh, ideas and surprisingly it wasn't what i thought so i'm going to tell you what i thought they'll say and then i'll tell you what they said we should do but before i get into that let me tell you the final thing i plan on implementing this year my oldest daughter and of course it's her because honestly i i i feel more for my oldest sister now <laughs> because i see how it's a lot of trial and error with a first child <laughs> and when the first child goes through something at first you don't know it's a phase until the second one does it, and you're like oh oh that was just a phase oh my bad and then when the second one does it, you're like nah, just let it go it's just a phase you know so i can see how but anyway so my first child you know she's she's in third grade now and she would tell me something that happened in school and you know here comes love i thinking oh, this is this is a chance to give some life lessons you know you know and i'm trying to to use this moment to instill because to me the best way to have some of those tough conversations about anything is just to take out the seriousness of it all not not the seriousness that's the wrong word but it's to take out the hmm, the weight of how big of a deal it is whatsoever talking about race um privacy and all that stuff is just take out the weight of it all and have the discussion like you would do normal discussion wherever you know in the car whatnot so you know she'll bring up a topic or something that happened in school and here comes love yes this is a time to teach her about life lessons you know well one time um, my daughter told me something that happened in school i think a friend says something that and love did the usual and i said you know 
you have to be ready to do xyz you know you have you can't rely on you know xyz and, and my daughter said mommy i wasn't you don't have to do the whole conversation i was just telling you i we don't have to do a life she didn't say life but she just said you don't have to do all that ha ah! i was like <laughs> we've already failed we've already failed oh my gosh we've already failed <laughs> you saw the eight <laughs> of course on the outside i was just like oh no 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 we don't have to know i'm just saying you know on the inside i was like oh my god oh my oh my god oh my we've we've started we've already what <laughs> so love it learned i'm not i'm not going to be doing that anymore <laughs> yes that will be a moment to teach some life lessons but we don't we don't have to i.e just keep it short and simple right everything doesn't have to be a teachable moment every that i it was a big 180 that time right away like and since then i've been doing that and i can i plan on continuing all of this year everything does not have to be a teachable moment so there was something with her and her friend maybe her friend made a comment and instead of going yes you stand up for yourself no nah, no nah, keep it short and simple listen what happened and i think my girls already know i expect them to stand up for themselves and i'm trying to make sure they're not giving me a response based on what they know i want to hear and make sure i i i reserve what i think they should do to myself you know so they can openly and freely tell me what they did how are we going to make sure they do differently next time i think it can be done short and sweet like i've i've been doing last year trust me it's not a it's not a black and white situation right because you you just have to go with the flow is what i'm learning i i i, I know one of the other situation i i just said something like okay well that's good that's good that's good you know and then i think it says something like i'm glad you didn't xyz and then yeah i think it's fine you know although you can do xyz and i kept it short we're not going to do a whole life speech kept it short but you know good job i think next time it will help you to do xyz which is what before i would have gone yeah that's good next time this is what you should do and then, oh <laughs> love it is not doing that anymore no no love it is saying good job yeah that's good i understand why you feel that way i understand why you would do that yeah that makes sense i know i know how you feel and yeah i'm sure now next time i'm sure you do this 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 and that's where you throw it in you know that's where i throw it in but i'm learning to not jump on everything and try to here's where we parent no stop <laughs> it just it made me think of you know that marriage advice they give men all the time sometimes your wife talks to you just because she wants to vent she's not asking for a solution i felt like i was the man like i'm doing what husbands do like i'm trying to come up with life lessons right away and I hope you get the point of this <laughs> because i feel like this this is where i would probably just retake do a retake but i'm not going to do that anymore that's what we're doing it differently in 2022 to 2023 we're going to cut down on that retaking you know take take me as i am take me i would have sang a song and if you're born if you are if you were a teenager and adult in the early 2000s then you know the song take me as i am you know yeah that's a song all right so moving on to when I asked my kids about um, what mommy should do differently. I seriously thought they would say, play more with us because my girls, I mean, even if I spent two hours playing, they would still say play more. I thought they would say play more, play more games, but they didn't. They didn't. Surprisingly, what they said, and I gave them an ample chance. You know, I, I, it's like, what would you like us to do? I really, really made sure they understood the question. And they said, we should go to theme parks more because last year we only went to one we should bake more now that surprised me because we bake a lot okay maybe not a lot because honestly baking can be messy messy equals more stuff for mommy to clean more stuff for mommy to clean means more time and we don't have a lot of time but i i will do more baking if you follow me on instagram don't we do a lot of baking thank you thank you but okay 
we'll do we'll do more bacon. I'm ta I'm taking notes. I may not like what my boss is saying, but you know, I have to take note. I have to if I want to keep my job, I have to do so. We'll bake more. Then they said make slime. Now <sighs> these kids have been asking to make slime <laughs> since um 2021 you know the reason why we haven't made slime i can buy slime for a dollar do you know how messy slime is do you know the damage slime has made to my ceiling to my floor to my walls to my windows to my doors <laughs> anywho the moral of the story is love it does not want to make slime because it's messy okay it's messy i've thrown away several slimes because i've had it and two why put in all that work when i can just buy it for a dollar huh but they want to make it all the other crafts we've been doing their whole lives i guess it's not enough the amazon crafts i've been buying it's not enough we have to make slime i'll make slime we'll make slime and i will record it it will be recorded and it will be and it will be documented to show that so just so when they're older because i think this is the one time we'll make the slime and and it doesn't even make sense to me why we'll waste all that glue and soap and activator for slime when i can buy it once again for a dollar a dollar 25 thanks to inflation but still it's still cheaper than me make it but we, we will make the slime since they asked those were the three things that they said we should do which on one hand i was so proud of myself i felt like okay we're actually not doing bad <laughs> all right people i hope you've enjoyed it do you like this kind of format where it's just we're just talking and love it is just being more of herself this year with this channel is going to be more of myself until well, you know unless it doesn't work there we're going to have to close it down <laughs> but that's what it is all right i hope you've enjoyed it don't leave me hanging in the comments if you've watched it i know you have a thing or two to say so let me know and don't forget to give the thumbs up and people i will see you in the next video bye